Hello there and welcome to Power Race Preview Season 2, Episode 6. I'm joined by Graham Wilson from Beyond the Waves as we look ahead to Silla's game against Inverness. So Josh, we find ourselves away to Inverness once again. Lunchtime kickoff, uh, right, right in the middle of two of the biggest ties of the season. Let's be honest, these are season-defining uh, games against Helsingborgs, the final round of the playoffs to get into the Champions League. Now, uh, obviously, Inverness is never uh, a, an easy place for, for Celtic to go and play and get a result. With that being said, it's early doors in the season, but we, we need to make sure that we maximize opportunities to get full points. Uh, you know, there's there's sort of a conflict here, though, because we're dealing with some injuries. Uh, you know, obviously, to key players, Joe Ledley being amongst them. Chris Commons took a sore one to the top of the foot. I don't think that's going to be something that's going to hold him out for an extended period, but certainly something to keep an eye on. And we want to make sure that he's fully fit for that Wednesday tie. Obviously, we have an eye on that. Kyle left uh, right at halftime. So, you know, he's playing through a, a bit of a knock, as he has throughout the, much of the preseason and the early going. Uh, uh, and, and Gary Hooper really didn't seem fully fit to me. So my instinct at this point is that we're going to probably have a, a, a bit of a second team, a bit of a, a makeshift side, maybe an opportunity to play some younger players like Tony Watt, maybe uh, Philip Twardzik. Paul Slane has, has played, um, you know, obviously as evidenced last week against Ross County. Um, what are your thoughts there, Josh? I mean, you know, we have some players that are coming back in, haven't played a whole lot, might be an opportunity. James Forrest is, is an example, might be an opportunity to get their fitness up, give them 90 minutes to, to try and, play their way back into, into form and confidence. Um, do, we, do we play our first-team players to, to make sure that we get the result? Do we, do we rest our first-team players? Because it's so important, this tie coming up uh, on Wednesday. Well, I think an important thing to note is that Inverness during the summer transfer window so far, uh, they've not really signed any attacking players. So far, they've sold Johnny Hayes and Gregor Taddy, and they two were Inverness's you know, main attacking players. Taddy with you know, a bit of pace, a bit of strength. And Johnny Hayes, you know, he was a, a very agile winger and, you know, he always gave us problems. So I, I, I think that Inverness, they might not be as, ta- as attacking as they usually are. Uh, not really saying that they ever re- really were an attacking side, but I don't think they'll be as big a threat as they usually are against Celtic. But, you know, that, that's no reason to say that they'll be a, a walk in the park. So I, I think it's good that we put out an attacking side. It doesn't essentially need to be, you know, all of our first team. But, you know, quite an attacking side. Uh, so far in the past two seasons, we've typically typically played six defensive players. Uh, I think that Paul Larkin's kind of noted on. So I think this might be an opportunity to, you know, you know maybe shuffle that around a little bit. And uh, one thing I've, you know, kind of pondered about recently is playing a 4-4-1-1. And this would allow Samaras, uh, Commons and Force to play all on the same team. Perhaps, you know, maybe someone like Tony Watt or... You know, just stick to the typical guy Hooper, who hasn't been totally on form recently. What did you think about that? Yeah, I think you make several great points there, Josh. I mean, first off, Gary Hooper has not been fully fit this entire uh, preseason and then early going in in the season. He picked up a, a bit of a knock uh, in Philadelphia. He did. He, let's be honest, he didn't look like himself away to Helsingborgs. A lot of those high up pressing runs that that he typically makes. He just wasn't present for it. I think that comes down to the fact that, that he wasn't able to do it. Chris Commons and Joe Ladley were having to pick up a lot of the, the heavy uh, work with regard to that. So I'd definitely sit him out this weekend. Make sure that he gets fully recharged, fully fit. But Chris Commons has really been the the spark to our, our attacking uh, sort of endeavor, if you will. And his presence on Wednesday is going to be absolutely vital, but it's really hard to drop him even for this weekend's tie. Because as you mentioned... You know, Inverness is not going to be the most attacking, most most uh, a polished side. You know, we need to to set out, and, and you know, I think that's also a good point that that we typically set out uh, overly defensive. If we can take the game to Inverness, I think that's really going to help us out in two two circumstances. First off, Inverness, as I mentioned, you know, they're not really going to have free flowing football going, but they can take advantage of t- defensive. Uh, mistakes, mental mistakes. We're going to need to keep it tight at the back. The best way we can do that is holding on to the ball. And, and having players like James Forrest, as you mentioned, Chris Commons, and then Sammy. Sammy's going to have opportunities to, to run down the flank and have balls played out in front of him that he can run onto. I think that's really the best way to neutralize uh, Inverness, give ourselves as many opportunities as possible, and keep the ball away from Inverness, keep them away from opportunities with set pieces. That's really where, where 
we're going to fall into the most danger. Yeah, like against Hearts, uh, Inverness went 2-0 down in the first half, but in the second half, uh, they got two goals to come back, uh, getting a goal in the 90th minute through Pepper. So, you know, it looked like in the first half that down it out, but, you know, they can always get, you know, a little bit of a dodgy comeback. Uh, first of all, by getting a penalty, that personal was a little bit dodgy. So I think it's essential that we take a team that can, you know, get at least two goals against Inverness, you know, a, a team of that calibre. If we go there looking for a 1-0 result and Inverness score a goal, then I think it's good that we aim for a team, you know, that can score at least two goals. Doesn't mean we have to get two goals. So what is your, you know, sort of team prediction? Well, first off, starting from the back, I mean, Fraser Forster had really the game of his career and, and justified that the two million pounds spent on him uh, early doors in this uh, transfer window, I would guess. I mean, it was obviously a predetermined uh, uh, value, but nonetheless, he really solidified his position and, and got, I mean, he got noticed from, from all over Great Britain and, and hopefully he's going to be getting a look in for that England side very soon. So, I mean, he's the first name on the team sheet in, in, in my mind anyway. Emilio Zagari, you know, he consistently is finding himself on the wrong side of his man in defense. Again, he's coming off of a horrific injury. It's just one of those things where we're, we're going to need to, to ha- help him play his way back into confidence, play his way back into form. He was part of that side that got the result away in Sweden on Wednesday. Hopefully he can carry that confidence with him and and, and just become the, the, the Emilio Zagari of old. I mean, obviously... Uh, He's never been the the best source for service into the box, but his his crossing has improved greatly this season. So uh, that's that's something positive to build on. He's definitely a lock for me at left back. Now, central defense is a bit of a, t- a tougher uh, proposition. Thomas Ronja picked up a, a knock in Sweden, so you know just in an overabundance of caution, I would sit him out. Bring Kelvin Wilson in. Yes, Kelvin Wilson is not the steadiest hand at the back, but nonetheless. You know, he has had a couple of decent performances uh, uh, you know, in, in the month of August. I'm hoping that we can build on that. Playing next to Charlie Mulgrew, who, who was part of that side, playing away in Sweden. Hopefully that can steady his nerves, build some confidence, because we're going to need him uh, go, going throughout this fall. I mean, we're going to be playing in Europe. You know, make no mistake. So we're going to need some squad rotation. He's going to be a vital source of that. And then Adam Matthews on the right-hand side. I thought he had an excellent game uh, away to Sweden. Looks like he's fully fit, playing his way into good form, uh, might be an opportunity to, to, to see Michael Lushtig, but I don't think so. In terms of the midfield, like you mentioned, Georgios Samaras pegged to that left-hand side. Um, if we can provide him service up that left-hand flank, balls that he can run onto, and then you know, exploit that space in between the, the midfield bank and the defense, that's going to cause Inverness all sorts of problems. I think that's absolutely vital. Victor Wanyama didn't play through suspension uh, away to Sweden, so we're definitely going to need to get him some some game action get his fitness and, and, and sharpness uh, going because he's going to be a vital component on Wednesday uh, in that second leg. He, his presence, I think, was, was vitally missed, um, especially in that first half. It, it just seemed like we took our foot off the gas and we had all sorts of problems dealing with Helsingborg with wave after wave of attack, not being able to, to maintain possession. His presence is definitely going to be absolutely vital. Joe Ledley, it's, it's looking like he's not going to be available I would guess Scott Brown would, would probably be starting, although he's carrying a knock, so that might be an opportunity for Philip Twardzik. And then on the right-hand side, James Forrest, he, he was substituted on in that Helsingborg tie for Baram Kyle and really made the difference. I mean, what a spark he provided. It would be great to get him 90 minutes, build his fitness back up. Tony Watt. Now, here's a player that hasn't played a whole lot with the first team in the preseason. Uh, we saw him come on last week against Ross County and just uh, provide – just the spark that we needed. I mean, yes, we had to wait until in the last 20 seconds, but nonetheless, the game definitely changed with his introduction. I think it's time he got a starting position, especially with Gary Hooper, not really looking fully fit, fully on form, bit of a question mark uh, with regard to Anthony Stokes. And then Chris Commons. I mean, you know, if we're going to play that 4 4 one one that you tend to advocate, I think that would be a great partnership. See how that develops. Chris Commons and Tony Watt up there linking up from midfield into attack and then going right at Inverness. What are your thoughts there? Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Uh, you know, we've got quite a few decent centre-backs for the likes of uh, Inverness. Uh, Kevin Wilson, as you said, uh, Mulgrew and Romia. Uh, Mulgrew, he did look a bit nervous against Helsingborg, but, you know, when he comes back into the SPL, he knows what he's doing. Uh, I think it was maybe just a little bit of European shock. Uh, he's not been the best in Europe, uh, 
you know, when he's been a bit nervous, like his game away against Braga, but when he's got some confidence behind him, he's, he's a fantastic player. So come up, uh, come up uh, against a familiar side. I think Mulgrew, you know, will be back to his usual self. Uh, you know, want to get the ball at his feet and you know, and really dictate uh, play from the back. Yep. Um, Rognier, he personally, uh, he's my favourite uh, defensive centre back at the moment. You know, he's not got the most pace in him, uh, and you know, it makes a few little mistakes here and there. But you know, he's none compared to Guy Caldwell in that aspect. <laughs> Good point. So, you know, Mulgo and Vilnia, no question about that at the back. And as I gave you, um, Matthews uh, in the full-back positions, I think that uh, a lot of people have been criticising as I gave you lately, but I think that's mainly because people have been expecting the, you know, the team of the year as I gave you. And, you know, it's going to take him a lot of while to get back to that level, but I think against Helsingborg, yeah, it, it wasn't brilliant in every single situation, but there was a few moments where he did manage to hold on to the ball and you know get the ball back up the pitch rather than just kicking it out. So I think he's definitely getting a little bit of momentum. And I think Inverness will be a good side uh, for him to play against because uh, you know, they've got to be pegged back, uh, pegged back quite often. Mm-hmm. It's just about how he can really link up with Georgia Summer so a bit more. Yeah, good point. Um, Chris Collins, I'd like to put him behind a, uh, either Tony Ward or Guy Hooper because he's our top goal scorer so far this season. As you know, last season he all scored one goal, which was against Rangers. A uh, fantastic goal. And he was playing in that same sort of role, just behind the striker. Um, and so far this season he's been put on right wing and you know he's kind of drifted, uh, drifted into the middle. So I think it would be good you know, just to dedicate him into the middle and just really give him a, a free role. Uh in the absence of really two fit strikers, uh, depending on uh, Anthony Stokes' condition. Uh, up front, Guy Hooper or Tony Watt. Um, I'd like to see Tony Watt, but I think Daniel Lennon will go for uh, Guy Hooper, you know, just to get him more game time and, you know, just really try to improve his sharpness because he's not been 100% sharp so far, I think. Uh, there was a few instances against Helsingborg that, you know, he kind of gave the ball away a bit loose. Um... But I think we go, uh, if we go there, you know, and we don't suffer from any sort of European hangover, I think we can get a two-nil result. I'd agree with that. You know, like I mentioned before, there's so much confidence coming from this result, and, and it's really absolutely going to be vital that the defensive back four, uh, and especially the central defenders, uh, really stay focused throughout the game. I mean, obviously, Kelvin Wilson has a, a tendency to nap. I, I'm counting on Charlie Mulgrew to to keep him awake, to keep him focused to build on this confidence and, and to not let Inverness capitalize on especially set pieces or, or any sort of um, mistakes that are made. And if they are, got to be quick in recovery. You know, we had a couple of uh, examples of that uh, away in Sweden on Wednesday. We did well to recover. These mistakes are still happening. Again, I just think these are teething issues, not really anything fundamental. It's only a matter of time. But as long as we keep getting the results, confidence continues, and it's not far off. But it's prediction time. Uh, well, for me, uh, you know, yeah, the the two nil. I would agree completely. Two nil yeah, for me as well. I jumped the gun a little bit there. Yeah, uh, two nil. I think as long as you know, we make sure Inverness don't uh, surprise us on the counter attack against Hearts. Inverness went two nil down in the first half, and you know, for the second half, it looked like Hearts were going to run away with it. But in the second half, Inverness got a, lo- a bit of a lucky penalty, and from there. Hearts were really under pressure to try hold on to their two, uh, two-one lead, and from there, uh, Inverness got a goal in the 90th minute. That was also dodgy; their only shot on target. So, you know, that's the sort of team we're going to be coming up against. You know, if they get a shot on target, you know, odd, odds are that they're going to take it. So, I think it's essential that we make sure that we keep the ball out of our box at every opportunity. You know, make sure it doesn't b- bounce behind the defenders. And if we get the lead, keep the ball. Don't get rash. Don't get. Uh, don't lose your pace, patience. You know, let, let's keep the ball and let's wait for our opportunities to cut them open. I think that's absolutely vital. You know, we saw a bit of uneasy, uneasiness on Wednesday away to uh, away <laughs> in Sweden, uh, but you know that's that's a learning opportunity. I'm sure that that Neil Lennon is going to be focusing on that. Hopefully, we can see some improvement. 
and give us a bit of a, a lift, a bit of a springboard into Wednesday, which is certainly going to be probably our most important game in the past five years. I'm absolutely buzzing for it. We're going to be back in the early part of the week to preview that game. So, uh, so this has been another episode of Paradise Preview, and we'll see you hopefully on Monday for our preview against the second leg against Helsingborg.